The Battle of Britain was an effort by the German Air Force during the summer and autumn of 1940 to gain air superiority over the Royal Air Force of the United Kingdom in preparation for the planned amphibious and airborne forces invasion of Britain by Operation Sea Lion. Neither the German leader Adolf Hitler nor his high command of the armed forces believed it was possible to carry out a successful amphibious assault on Britain until the RAF had been neutralized. Secondary objectives were to destroy aircraft production and ground infrastructure, to attack areas of political significance, and to terrorize the British people into seeking an armistice or surrender. The British date the battle from July 10 to October 31, 1940, which represented the most intense period of daylight bombing. German historians usually placed the beginning of the battle in mid-August 1940 and ended in May 1941, on the withdrawal of the German bomber units in preparation for Operation Barbarossa, the campaign against the Soviet Union. The Battle of Britain was the first major campaign to be fought entirely by air forces. The British in the defensive were mainly using fighter aircraft, the Germans used a mixture of bombers with fighter protection. It was the largest and most sustained bombing campaign attempted up until that date. The failure of Nazi Germany to destroy Britain's air defense or to break British morale is considered its first major setback. Fighter aircraft, main types, Hurricane, Spitfire and Bf 109, the most famous fighter aircraft used in the Battle of Britain were the British Hawker Hurricane and Supermarine Spitfire MKI and the German Messerschmitt Bf 109E variant single-engined fighters. Although the Spitfire was more glamorous, the Hurricanes were more numerous and were responsible for most of the German losses, especially in the early part of the battle. The turnaround time for the Spitfire was 26 minutes, while the Hurricanes was 9 minutes, which increased its effectiveness. Many of the Spitfires used in the battle were purchased privately. Money raised by towns, companies, clubs or individuals was used to buy Spitfires for a £5,000 each with the purchaser having naming rights. Queen Wilhelmina of the Netherlands donated a £215,000 to purchase 43 Spitfires. The Spitfire and Bf 109E were well matched in speed and agility, and both were somewhat faster than the Hurricane. The slightly larger Hurricane was regarded as an easier aircraft to fly and was effective against Luftwaffe bombers. The Royal Air Force's preferred tactic was to deploy the Hurricanes against formations of bombers and to use the Spitfires against the fighter escorts. The view from the blown clear cockpit hood of the Spitfire was considered fair, while upwards good. View to the rear was considered fair for a covered cockpit. The curved plexiglass windscreen however were very bad optically and caused considerable distortion, which made long-distance visual scanning difficult. Spitfire pilot Jeffrey Quill made recommendations for the installation of optically true glass into the side panels to solve the problem. The Hurricane had a higher seating position, which gave the pilot a better view over the nose than the Spitfire. The canopy of the BF 109E 3 was made of curved panels, while the E 4 was modified for better visibility with flat panels, and the new design was often retrofitted to earlier 109s. Handling and general overview each of the three main fighters had advantages and disadvantages in their control characteristics. Much of the air combat during the battle occurred at about 20,000 feet or lower. Due to its sensitive elevators, if the stick was pulled back too far on the Spitfire in a tight turn, stalling incidents may be reached and a high-speed stall induced. When this occurs, there is a violent shudder and clattering noise throughout the aeroplane which tends to flick over laterally and, Unless the control column is put forward instantly a rapid roll and spin will result. During tight turns the twist, or washout designed into the wing by Reginald Mitchell meant that the wing root would stall before the wingtips, creating the shuddering and clattering referred to. This noise was a form of stall warning, reminding the pilot to ease up on the turn. British testing in September 1940 revealed that some BF-109 pilots succeeded in keeping on the tail of the Spitfire, despite the latter aircraft's superior turning performance, because a number of the Spitfire pilots failed to tighten up the turn sufficiently. The gentle stall and good control under G of the BF-109 were of some importance, as they enabled the Luftwaffe pilot to get the most out of the aircraft in a circling dogfight by flying very near the stall. 
the BF-109 used leading-edge slats which automatically deployed prior to stalling. The Merlin engine of the British fighters had the drawback of being equipped with a float-type carburetor which cut out under negative G-forces. The fuel-injected Daimler-Benz DB601 engine gave the 109 an advantage over the carburetor-equipped engine. When RAF fighter attempted to bunt and dive away from an opponent as the 109 could, their engines would temporarily cut out for the duration of the negative G-forces. This ability to perform negative G maneuvers without the engine cutting out gave a 109 pilot better ability to disengage at will. On the question of comparative turning circles in combat, Spitfires and Hurricanes benefited from their lower wing loading compared with the BF 109. The Royal Aircraft Establishment estimated the Spitfires turning circle a euro without height loss a euro as 212 am in radius while the 109E's was estimated as 270 am radius at 3657 am. Other sources variously list a turn radius of between 125 am and 170 am at ground level and 230 am at 6000 am for the 109E. The Emil was smaller than either RAF fighter, and it was more difficult to land and take off than the Spitfire and Hurricane. At high speeds controls tighten considerably, and the BF-109E needed more strength to maneuver than either of its main opponents. Of all three fighters, the BF-109E would possess the highest roll rate, with the aileron controls being brisk and responsive. The Spitfire had the highest aileron forces, but both the Spitfire and the Messerschmitt's rate of roll suffered at high speed. Overall the differences in performance between the BF-109 and Spitfire were marginal and in combat they were surmounted by tactical considerations such as which side had seen the other first, which side had the advantage of altitude, numbers, pilot ability etc. with the main difference between the two aircraft being the Spitfire's title turning ability and the BF-109's faster climb rate. Armament both RAF fighters were armed with 8.303 Browning machine guns in the wings, harmonized by the squadrons to allow the bullets to converge at a distance. The Brownings had a high rate of fire and even a short burst from the eight machine guns sent out a large number of bullets. Although efficient against many aircraft, the small caliber bullets were often unable to penetrate the armor plating which was being increasingly used in Luftwaffe aircraft to protect crew and vital areas. An incendiary round, called the De Wilde was available, and this could do more damage than the standard ball rounds. During the battle at least one hurricane was experimentally armed with a single Hispano 20mm cannon in a pod under each wing although it proved to be too slow and sluggish on the controls to be effective. Several Spitfires, designated Spitfire MK. IBs, were also modified to carry a Hispano cannon in each wing panel. 19 Squadron was equipped with this version in June 1940. On entering combat in August this first cannon-armed Spitfire failed to create an impact, with the guns often jamming and unable to fire. When it did work, however, the Hispano was an effective weapon, with its shells easily able to penetrate the armor plating and self-sealing fuel tanks of Luftwaffe aircraft. The Emil's main armament depended on the subtype. The E-1 was armed with four MG-17 7.92mm machine guns, two cowl guns above the engine with 1,000 rounds per gun, and two in the wings with 500 rounds per gun. The E-3, E-4 and E-7s retained the fuselage armament of the E-1 but replaced the MG-17 wing guns with two MGFFs or improved MGFFM 20mm cannons, one in each wing with 60 RPG. Although the explosive cannon shells had great destructive power, the MGFF's low muzzle velocity and the limited ammunition capacity meant the armament was not markedly superior to the RAF fighters' eight machine guns. Three or four hits from the cannons were usually enough to bring down an enemy fighter and, even if the fighter was able to return to base, it would often be written off. For example, on August 18 a brand new Spitfire of 600 Du Squadron was hit by 20 arm shells which exploded in the structure of the rear fuselage. Although the crippled aircraft was successfully landed back at its airfield it was subsequently deemed to be unrepairable. The MGFFM, used in the BF-109E-4, was modified to fire the more destructive, 
high-capacity Mengschoei or mine shells propelling the lighter shells at greater velocities than the MGFF. The early shells of this type had contact fusing, detonating on contact with the skin of the airframe rather than penetrating, then exploding. The BF-109F1, issued in small numbers starting in October, carried two Cal MG-17s and a single 20mm MGFFM in the fuselage, firing through the propeller hub. Fuel tanks, a drawback of the hurricane was the presence of a fuel tank just behind the engine firewall, which could catch fire and within a few seconds severely burn the pilot before he managed to bail out. This was later partly solved by fitting a layer of Linotex fire-resistant material to the tank, and an armored panel forward of the instrument panel. Another hazard was presented by the mainwing route-mounted fuel tanks of the Hurricane, which were vulnerable to bullets fired from behind. The main fuel tanks of the Spitfire, which were mounted in the fuselage forward of the cockpit, were better protected than that of the Hurricane. The lower tank was self-sealing and a panel of 3 m thick aluminium, sufficient to deflect small-caliber bullets, was wrapped externally over the top tanks. Internally they were coated with layers of Linotex, and the cockpit bulkhead was fireproofed with a thick panel of asbestos. On all the German fighters and bombers, the fuel tanks were self-sealing, and although capable of sealing leaks from enemy rounds, this could not prevent possibly fatal damage being inflicted by the De Wilde incendiary round which was being used by the RAF. Durability and armor, the Spitfire, from about mid-1940, had 73 pounds of armored steel plating in the form of head and back protection on the seat bulkhead, and covering the forward face of the glycol header tank. The Hurricane had a similar armor layout to the Spitfire, and was the toughest and most durable of the three. Serviceability rates of Hawker's fighter were always higher than the complex and advanced Spitfire. The Messerschmitt Bf 109E-3 received extra armor in late 1939, and this was supplemented with a 10 m thick armored plate behind the pilot's head during and after the Battle of France. Behind the fuel tank, an 8 m armored plate was placed in the fuselage protecting the tank and the pilot from attacks from behind. Propeller types, by July 1940, more efficient de Havilland and Rotol constant speed propellers had begun replacing two pitch propellers on frontliner AF fighters. The new units allowed the Merlin to perform more smoothly at all altitudes and reduced the takeoff and landing runs. The majority of the frontliner AF fighters were equipped with these propellers by mid August. The BF 109 also used a constant speed VDM unit with automatic pitch control. 100 octane aviation fuel, as early as 1938 Roy Fedden, who designed most of the Bristol Engine Company's most successful aero engines, pressed for the introduction of 100-octane aviation fuel from the USA, and later that year the British aero engine manufacturers Bristol and Rolls-Royce demonstrated variants of their Mercury and Merlin engines rated for 100-octane fuel. A memorandum by the Department of Defense Coordination Proposals for securing adequate supplies of 100 octane fuel to meet war requirements, December 23, 1938, noted that there was a need to increase supplies of 100 octane fuel and discussed ways in which this could be achieved. A meeting was held on March 16, 1939, to consider the question of when the 100 octane fuel should be introduced to general use for all RAF aircraft, and what squadrons, number, and type were to be supplied. The decision taken was that there would be an initial delivery to 16 fighter and two twin-engine bomber squadrons by September 1940. However, this was based on a pre-war assumption that U.S. supplies would be denied to Britain in wartime, which would limit the numbers of frontline units able to use the fuel. On the outbreak of war this problem disappeared. Production of the new fuel in the U.S., and in other parts of the world, increased more quickly than expected with the adoption of new refining techniques. As a result 100 octane fuel was able to be issued to all frontline fighter command aircraft starting in the spring 1940. Although U-boats and surface raiders had begun to take a heavy toll of tankers, in the summer of 1940 there was a surplus of these ships because of the incorporation into the British Merchant Marine of tanker fleets from countries overrun by Germany. The combination of CS propellers and 100-octane fuel put the British fighters on par with the Luftwaffe. 
Throughout 1940 the supply situation and distribution of the fuel to the frontline services was discussed by the Coordination of Oil Policy Committee. With 100 octane fuel the supercharger of the Merlin 3 engine could be boosted to plus 12 lbs sq in, producing 1310 hp at 3000 rpms at 9000 feet with a time limit of 5 minutes. This increased power substantially improved the rate of climb, especially at low to medium altitudes, and increased the top speed by 25-34 mph up to 10,000 feet. During the Battle of France and over Dunkerque RAF Hurricanes and Spitfires were able to use the emergency boost. In the opinion of a pre-war paper by the British Air Ministry, Germany, as a large producer of synthetic fuel, was thought to be in a favorable position to produce 100 octane fuel in large quantities. The German supply of aviation fuels was largely based on the hydrogenation of coal, due to their limited supplies of natural crude oil. At the outbreak of the war, Germany already had seven destructive hydrogenation plants in operation, with a total installed capacity of 1,400,000 TE year of oil. At the start of the war the Luftwaffe standardized on 87 octane aviation gasoline, called B4, made from leaded hydropetrol extracted from brown coal. In 1940 an improved fuel, designated C2 was introduced having a higher aromatic content of 35 to 38 percent and giving performance equivalent to allied 100 octane grade at that time. C2 was used in small quantities by aircraft such as the Messerschmitt Bf 109E-4 per Newton and E7 per Newton and the Messerschmitt Bf 110C when equipped with the DB601N engine, that entered series production in October 1939. The power was increased by 20% over that of the DB601A, to 1260 HP at 6900 feet at 1.35 atmospheres boost pressure and 2400 rpms. By July, 9 BF-110 and 3 BF-109 fighters to film were equipped with the new engines, by the end of October around 1,200 DB601N engines had been delivered and the number of aircraft equipped with the improved engine gradually increased through the second half of the year. However, due to leaking valves there was relatively high wear on the 601N engines, which had a life of about 40 hours. Other fighter aircraft, in addition to the Hurricane, Spitfire, and the BF-109, several other fighter aircraft took part in the Battle of Britain. Messerschmitt Bf 110, at the start of the battle, the twin-engine Messerschmitt Bf 110 long-range destroyer was expected to engage in air-to-air -air combat while escorting the Luftwaffe bomber fleet. Although the aircraft was well-designed and the best of its class, being reasonably fast and possessing a respectable combat radius, the concept that the Bf 110 could defend bombers against a concerted attack by a force of fast single-seat, single-engine fighters was flawed. When pitted against the Hurricane and Spitfire the BF-110s began to experience heavy losses through being only slightly more maneuverable than the bombers they were meant to escort and suffering from poor acceleration. A variant of the 110 was the BF-110D1 per Ranking 1, nicknamed Dax and Belly, because of the fixed, wooden, 264-gallon fuel tank fitted under the fuselage. I. Slash ZG-76, based in Norway was equipped with this version in order to provide air cover for convoys sailing along the Norwegian coast. On August 15, in the belief that all of the RAF fighter units were concentrated far to the south, Luftflotte 5 launched its first and only bomber attack against northeastern England. Seven out of the 21 IZG-76 aircraft being used as bomber escorts were destroyed, including that of the Group N commander. The casualty rates of all of the BF-110 fighter units were extremely high throughout the battle and they fulfilled none of the high aspirations of Hermann Gar Paragraph Ring, who had referred to them as his Ironsides. The most successful role of the BF-110 during the battle was as a fast bomber. One unit, Test Group 210 inches, proved it could carry a greater bomb load over a greater range than a Ju-87 and deliver it with similar accuracy while its much higher maximum speed, especially at lower altitudes, meant it was far more capable of evading RAF fighters. 
the BF-110 possessed a heavy armament of 220mm GFFM cannon and four 7.92mm G-17s concentrated in the forward fuselage, along with a single 7.92mm G-15 for rear defence in the rear cockpit. Bolton Paul Defiant For the British, the most disappointing fighter was the Bolton Paul Defiant. This aircraft was intended to be used as a bomber destroyer, because it was thought. The speed of modern bombers is so great that it is only worthwhile to attack them under conditions which allow no relative motion between the fighter and its target. The fixed gun fighter with guns firing ahead can only realize these conditions by attacking the bomber from dead astern. By 1940, it was clear to both the RAF and the Luftwaffe that the deadliest opponents of bombers were single-engine, single-seat fighters with fixed, forward-firing armament. Apart from the extra weight and drag imposed by the four-gun turret and second crew member, the Defiant lacked any directly forward-firing armament. Should the gunner need to escape from the turret in an emergency, the only way he could do this was to traverse the turret to one side and bail out through the escape hatch. Should the aircraft's electric system, which operated the turret, be disabled, there was no escape. After the strong intervention of Dowding, who realized the Defiant was designed to an unworkable concept, there were only two units equipped with this aircraft, 141 and 264 squadrons. On July 19, after encountering BF 109s of 3 slash JG 51, 141 SQN had four Defiants shot down, one written off and one damaged, with ten crew members killed or missing. Just over a month later, on August 24, 264 SQN suffered the loss of four Defiants shot down and three badly damaged with seven crew members killed. Both units were withdrawn from 11 Group, re-equipped, and took no further part in daytime operations. However, the Defiant was found to be more effective as a night fighter. It equipped four squadrons and during the Winter Blitz on London of 1940 Euro 41, Defiance shot down more enemy aircraft than any other type. Italian fighter aircraft, the Fiat Creek 42 was a biplane fighter used by the Italian Air Corps. They only made one mission during the battle itself when on October 29 they provided a bomber escort on a raid on Ramsgate. Following the end of the battle, the Italian force continued to carry out limited raids on England, and on November 11, 1940, Four CR-42s acting as escorts were destroyed by RAF hurricanes with no loss to the RAF. German Luftwaffe aircraft had difficulty flying in formation with the biplanes, which also proved to be poor match for the more modern British fighters, and the CR-42s were transferred back to the Mediterranean theater. The Italians also fielded a small number of Fiat G-50 monoplane fighters. However, this fighter was restricted by its short range of barely 400 miles and the lack of a radio unit in most participating aircraft. Also an additional number of Mackie C-200 seater monoplane fighters escorting formations of Savoia Marchetti SM-79 spare Vira medium bombers, other British fighters, the Bristol Blenheim was used by both bomber and fighter commands. Some 200 Mk. I bombers were modified into Mk. IF long-range fighters with 600 squadron based at Hendon, the first squadron to take delivery of these variants in September 1938. By 1939, at least seven squadrons were operating these twin-engine fighters and within a few months some 60 squadrons had transitioned to the type. The MK. IF proved to be slower and less nimble than expected and by June 1940, daylight Blenheim losses were to cause concern for fighter command. It was then decided that the IF would be relegated mainly to night fighter duties where No. 23 Squadron RAF who had already operated the type under nighttime conditions had better success. In the German night bombing raid on London, June 18, 1940, Blenheim night fighters accounted for five German bombers thus proving they were better suited in the nocturnal role. In July, No. 600 Squadron, by then based at RAF Manston, had some of its IFs equipped with airborne interception MK-3 radar. With this radar equipment, a Blenheim from the fighter interception unit at RAF Ford achieved the first success on the night of 2 3 July 1940, accounting for a Dornier Du-17 bomber. 
more successes came and, before long, the Blenheim was to prove invaluable in the night fighter role. Gradually, with the introduction of the Bristol Bowfighter in 1940 Euro 41, its role was supplanted by its faster, better armed progeny. The first Bowfighters entered service in early September 1940, at first delivered in standard day fighter camouflage schemes although the type was intended for a night fighting role. The first night operations took place in September and October 1940 and on the night of 19-November 20, 1940, a Bowfighter IF equipped with AI radar down to Ju-88. The aircraft from 604 Squadron was flown by FLT Lieutenant John Cunningham, scoring the first of his 20 victories. The only British biplane fighter in operational service was the Gloucester Gladiator which equipped No. 247 Squadron RAF, stationed in RAF Roberf, Devon. Although no combat sorties took place at the height of the aerial battles, No. 247 Gladiators intercepted a He-111 in late October 1940, without result. No. 239 Squadron RAF using Gladiators in an Army cooperation role and No. 804 Squadron, fleet air arm outfitted with Sea Gladiators were also operational during the Battle of Britain. The British had a cannon-armed fighter coming into service, the twin-engined Westland Whirlwind but problems with its engines and slow production meant it did not enter service until December 1940. Bomber aircraft The majority of the bomber aircraft involved in the Battle of Britain were German although the Italians fielded a small number. German bomber aircraft, the Luftwaffe in 1940 primarily relied on three twin-engined medium bombers, the Dornier Du-17, the Hinkel He-111 and the Junkers Ju-88. Despite the Luftwaffe being in the possession of advanced gyroscopic bomb sites, the Lotfen Ru 7 for daylight bombing and electronic navigational aids like the Nikobine, X Gira Currency T and Y Gira Currency T for nocturnal bombing, there were some very fundamental limitations to the accuracy of bombing from level flight, and there was no guarantee that such attacks could achieve success on small or difficult targets such as radar stations. For precision attack emphasis was placed on the development of aircraft which could utilize the technique of dive bombing for which the Junkers Ju-87 Stuka was specifically designed. The Junkers Ju-88 was fitted with external dive brakes and a control system, similar to those of the Ju-87 and could carry out a dive bombing role, although it was primarily used as a level bomber. The light bomb loads carried by the Ju-87 had been used to great effect during the Battle of France. However, the Ju-87 was slow and possessed inadequate defenses. Furthermore, it could not be effectively protected by fighters, because of its low speed and the very low altitudes at which it ended its dive bomb attacks. The Stuka depended on air superiority, the very thing being contested over Britain. It was therefore withdrawn from attacks on Britain in August after prohibitive losses, leaving the Luftwaffe short of precision ground attack aircraft. Another constraint was imposed by the light armament carried by the Luftwaffe bombers. At the start of the battle they were still armed with an average of three handheld MG-15 light machine guns, which were supplied by 75-round saddle magazines. When faced with concentrated attacks by modern fighters such as the Hurricane and Spitfire this proved totally inadequate. Although many of the Luftwaffe gunners were well trained and capable of hitting a fast-moving fighter the damage done was seldom enough to stop the attack in time to prevent heavy damage being done to the bomber. The high rate of fire of the MG-15 meant that the small magazines emptied quickly. The time taken to reload often gave a fighter the time it needed to make a successful attack. Efforts had been made to increase the number of defensive weapons. But this also meant that because the weapons were handheld either more crew members were needed in each aircraft, or the existing crew members could be overworked. It was a problem which was never to be fully resolved and the Luftwaffe bombers had to rely on the ability of their fighters to protect their formations. The bombers did enjoy some advantages. As more armor plate was added in vital areas, crew members became less vulnerable. Their fuel tanks were also well protected by layers of self-sealing rubber, Although the tracer ammunition which was carried by RAF fighters could sometimes ignite fuel vapor in empty tanks. The He-111 was nearly 100 mph slower than the Spitfire and didn't present much of a challenge to catch, 
Although the heavy armor for the crew stations, self-sealing fuel tanks and progressively upgraded defensive armament meant that it was still a challenge to shoot down. It was the most numerous German bomber type during the battle, and was capable of delivering 2,000 kg of bombs to the target, carried in an internal bomb bay, usually eight 250 kg bombs, stored vertically. Subsequent variants allowed further increase in the bomb load and the maximum size of bombs carried, with external bomb racks. The state-of-the-art lot V gyroscoping bomb site fitted to the Heinkel allowed for reasonable accuracy, for a level bomber. The main versions of the He-111 in use were the Jumo engined H-1, H-2 and H-3 and the DB-601 powered P-2 and P-4. Small numbers of the aircraft, called H-1X and H-3X, were equipped with Nicobine and x gira currency T and were used by Camp Group 100 at night during the closing stages of the battle. y gira currency T equipped H-5Y of 3. Group Camp Jeshuada 26 began to take part in the Blitz of the winter of 1940-1941. The Du-17Z was an older type of German bomber that was no longer in production by the start of the battle. Still, many Camp Jeshuadrons still operated the Dornia, known as the Flying Pencil due to its sleek fuselage. Its air-cooled radial BMW engines meant that many of these aircraft were able to survive fighter attack because there was no vulnerable cooling system to disable. The Dornier was also maneuverable, and as a result was popular in the Luftwaffe. The main problem with the Dornier was its limited 200-mile combat range, when fully loaded with bombs. Its bomb-carrying capacity was also limited to 2,205 LBS. Older versions of the Du-17 mainly the E-1, were still used for weather reconnaissance duties. Of the four types of bomber used by the Luftwaffe the Ju-88 was considered to be the most difficult to shoot down. As a bomber it was relatively maneuverable and, especially at low altitudes with no bomb load, it was fast enough to ensure that a Spitfire engaged in a tail chase would be hard-pressed to catch up. It could carry up to 3,000 kg of bombs. However, only small-sized 50 and 70 kg bombs, up to a total weight of 1,400 kg, could be carried internally, while larger bombs had to be carried on external racks, causing considerable drag. The Ju-88 was also extremely versatile, being fitted with both the Lot V gyroscoping bombsite and Stuvi dive site as well as retractable dive brakes. The front machine gun could be locked fixed to fire forwards and could be used for strafing runs. Thus the Ju-88, dubbed as the Big Stuka, was equally at home when it came to level or dive bombing or low-level attacks. The versions of the Ju-88 used during the battle were the A-1 and the A-5. The latter incorporated several improvements, including an increased wingspan and uprated armament. The Ju-88C-1 heavy fighter version was also used in small numbers. In reality, the Ju-88, although operating in smaller numbers than the Du-17 and He-111, suffered the highest losses of the three German bomber types. Losses of Du-17 and He-111s amounted to 132 and 252 machines destroyed respectively, while 313 Ju-88s were lost. I. Slash KG-40 was equipped with a small number of the four-engined Focke-Wulf FW-200s which were used to attack shipping and to provide long-range reconnaissance around the British Isles and out into the Atlantic Ocean. Italian bomber aircraft, the Corpo Aereo Italiano, CAI, was an expeditionary force of the Regia Aeronautica that participated in the very late stages of the Battle of Britain. The bomber element consisted of some 70 Fiat Branch 20 twin-engined bombers of 13 a degree Stormo and 43 a degree Stormo. Based in Belgium the Italian Branch 20 was a bomber capable of carrying 1600 kg of bombs. Supporting aircraft included five Kent Z-1007 used for reconnaissance duties and several Caproni Car 133 transports. The Italian Bomber Force flew limited operations undertaken were commenced towards the end of the battle. The CAI's bombers flew about 102 sorties only one of which attained any notable success a Euro severe damage being caused to a canning factory in Lowestoft on November 29, 1940, which killed three people. The first mission on October 25, 
a night attack of 16 aircraft on Harwich and led to three bombers being lost, with one crashing on takeoff and two becoming lost on their return. On November 11 the formation of 10 BR-20s, escorted by Fiat Creek 42 biplane fighters and a daylight raid on Harwich, was intercepted by RAF hurricanes. Three bombers were downed and three CR-42s destroyed with four damaged, with no loss to the hurricanes. In early January 1941 all of the bombers were redeployed. Full list of aircraft, United Kingdom, only the squadrons listed as Battle of Britain or AF squadrons were counted as being part of the Battle of Britain for the award of a campaign medal, Bristol Blenheim, Blenheim MK. IF, Fighter Command, Blenheim MK IVF, Coastal Command, Bristol Bowfighter MK. I, Fighter Command. Bolton Paul Defiant MK. I, Fighter Command, Gloucester Gladiator, Fighter Command, Hawker Hurricane MK. I and MKIIA Series I, Fighter Command, Supermarine Spitfire MK. I and MK. 2, Fighter Command, Westland Lysander, Germany, Breguet 521 Bizert, Dornier Du 17, Du 17 M and P, Du 17 Z2, Du 17 Z3. Dornier Du 18 D1, Focke-Wulf FW 200 C3, He Inkel He 59 C2, He Inkel He 111, He 111 H2, He 111 H3, He 111 H4, He 111 P1. He Inkel He 115 B1 and B2, Junkers Du 87 B1 and B2, Junkers Du 88 A1 and A5, Messerschmitt BF 109, BF 109 E 1, E1 per byte, BF 109 E 3, BF 109 E 4, E 4 per byte, E 4 per newton, BF 109 E 7, E 7 per newton, BF 109 F 1, Messerschmitt BF 110, BF 110 C 4, C 4 per byte, BF 110 C 5. Italy, Fiat Branch 20 M Sicona Fiat Creek 42 S Volco, Fiat G50 Frixia, Mackey MC 200 Ceta, see also, Air Warfare of World War II, References, Notes, Citations, Bibliography, External links, Royal Air Force History, Battle of Britain Historical Society, Battle of Britain in the words of Air Chief Marshal Hugh Dowding, Map of UK Airfields and Squadrons. RAF Battle of Britain Roll of Honor, Battle of Britain Website. Battle of Britain Website in Dutch. Battle of Britain Memorial, Shoreham Aircraft Museum, Tangmere Military Aviation Museum, Kent Battle of Britain Museum, Battle of Britain from the German Perspective, PDF File, Battle of Britain from the German Perspective.